The Libre PDM browser gives us a special ability to go back in time. Let's take a look to see what I mean. Here in the safe, I have my do nothing and my radio projects, but let's make a new one and I'll call it gyroscope. With that being created, let's go ahead and open up a gyroscope and put it in our new project. This is a really cool gyroscope. Love the way it moves. We'll go ahead and save it. And we'll uh, check it into the safe. So let's take a look at what this looks like in our safe now. And of course, we've got our gyroscope project and all of our parts. So opening up our gyroscope now, let's take a look at this crank. Perhaps I would like to edit this here and make the crank a lot shorter. First, I'll open up a sketch four and edit it. Let's say I want to take this down to 30. I'll deactivate and generate to the last feature. And then with my shorter crank, I'll go ahead and save it and check it into the safe. So I've been able to make an update to my part and it's now checked in. And as I turn this, I say, hold on, that looks way too short. Maybe I've done totally the wrong thing. So I'll edit this again. And uh, this time I say, you know what? I wanna lengthen this out because that did indeed look way too short. So we'll edit that and I'll make this a length of how about 65. I'll deactivate the sketch. We'll generate to our last feature. And I might say, yes, that looks way better. We're gonna save that, we're gonna check it in. And I've done completely the right thing. Now as I go to turn it, I say, you know what? That just looks too long. So let's edit this again. And hopefully I'll be able to make up my mind this time. Now I'll uh, jump into our sketch four and I'm gonna turn this back to 50, right? We'll deactivate, generate to the last feature. This time I'm gonna save it, but I won't check it into the safe. I'm just gonna say, okay. So let's take a look at what we've done in our safe when I've started editing this assembly. When I jump into the safe, you can see that I have my crank and my gyroscope both locked. That means I have them checked out, and if others try to edit, they'll be warned that I am in process of editing these. Now, when I pull up my crank, I have certain properties down here, right? I have these tabs, and actually, properties is my first tab. Under properties, I have a bunch of metadata, right? I have my part name. Maybe I want to add a part number. When I add a part number, I can click the green check to actually apply that. And I have all kinds of other data that I can add, including revision, title, and so on. So I can add data to my part as needed, and I can even use the add property, which we'll cover in future videos, so I can make my own properties and metadata. To be concise, I can hide empty rows and just see the parts that have data. And I also have versions over here, right? And I have several versions of this already, which we'll talk about. My first version is my original size, but of course I said I want my crank to be substantially shorter. So I checked in version two and you can see how that became shorter in my next version. Then I have version three, which I made substantially longer. And again, it's reflected in version three. But if you recall, after I made my crank longer, I turned it back to about 50. And where's that? Well, I don't have that version because I didn't check my part in. So in order to have that version, I'll need to check in my part. And I'll say, check in. And a little check in dialog box comes up and I'll apply it. Now this crank is visible to everyone else that I'm working with in its current version. And I have my version four right here that has the length of 50 where it becomes a little bit shorter. So that's how we can track past versions. We also have our date and time that it was checked in as well as who checked it in. What can I do with these past versions? Well, I can right click and I can view my past version. And when I do, 
I'm greeted with my past version and I can see my history tree, but I can't roll it back or forward because it's a read only. So I can't have any of my editing tools active either, but this is great when I want to make uh, measurements or view what the past state looked like. But let's say that I decided after I made all these changes that I was right all along. Well, I don't have to go back into my version four and try to make it like version one again. I can simply right click and restore my version and I'll apply. And now I am greeted with version five that says that, yep, indeed, this is restored from version one. So maybe I'll go ahead and close my assembly and I'll open it again. And indeed, I can see my gyroscope. And I'll go ahead and edit my sketch four. And we are at a length of 45, just as we were in the last time. So I'll generate to the last feature and close. I can check this in, even though I didn't really make any substantial changes. And so you can see, I have my crank with all of its previous versions, including the one that I just worked with. I have my gyroscope and that has all of its previous versions. And you can tell from version one to version two, we're changing the length of that crank. And then in version three, it gets very long and in version four, it's uh, calmed back down again. So I can browse all the different checked in versions of my gyroscope and restore them as needed on an assembly level, as well as on a part level. Now let's say I, I wish to uh, restore the first version of my gyroscope and I can apply that. You can see that now my crank is on version seven when it was on version six. So when I restore assemblies, uh, the constituent parts in there also get a new version when they're restored so everything can be restored all at once. Next, we should mention where used, and this is a very interesting one. Let's move to my library where I have my head bolt, and under where used, I can see that it's used in both the do nothing machine and the cylinder assembly. And I've got this little drop down carrot that tells me that that's a sub assembly in the radial engine. So I can see exactly where a single part is used, even if it's used in multiple projects. On the other hand, I also have constituents, which for the head bolt looks pretty boring. It just says head bolt. But if I move to my radial project and I ask myself, what are all the parts that are used in this? I can stand on my radial, go to my constituents and see all of the files that are used. I can also open up the sub assemblies to see all the files in there and even another sub assembly to see all the files in there. So in this case, I have an indented tree structure that tells me exactly where all of my parts are and how they're organized within this assembly. I also have these folder icons so that if I click on my folder icon, it highlights the part in its location of where it's used in that assembly. So we're given all of these tabs here of the properties of the part, the versions of the part, where the part is used, and if it's an assembly, what its constituents are. And that's how we go back in time. But at this point, after we've used the PDM browser quite a lot, you might be wondering, what does it look like when two people work on something at the same time? And what does collaboration actually look like? Let's address that in the next video. See you then.